So uh, just to give a little context to today's video, it was recorded at uh, the University of Stellenbosch in the Faculty of Theology where I teach. It was uh, at a conference where Professor John Mbiti was the main speaker. He was honoured by the Anglican Church uh, in South Africa for his contribution to the translation of the Bible. And uh, this specific conference focused on uh, John Mbiti's work and we also focused on the issue of decolonization and uh, considering uh, Western epistemologies and pedagogies and uh, whiteness and how these uh, issues need to be engaged in order to develop a truly African or fully African uh, theology. So uh, that gives a bit of context. Uh, in this video, Professor Mbiti was responding uh, to some questions, but he just uh, said some wonderful things about uh, his approach to translating uh, the New Testament text. Um, just to say, there's uh, another video, uh, an interview with Professor Rothney Charker that goes with this one, uh, which gives uh, the sort of broader context uh, to the conference. So please, uh, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Uh, go and watch that. Thanks for watching. Conference. I really find it is a very, very solid kind of engagement. And I wish that I could respond in detail to the many, many points which came up. Maybe I would just summarize with the two points some of the things that came up. <coughs> the center of African religion or religiosity is the acknowledgement or belief in God. This is in Africa universal and you can't get rid of that belief in African society. There can be no denial of God in well urban and in rural communities, in traditional communities, you cannot deny God. And that then became the most important point of contact between traditional religion and the Christian message. A Christian message came speaking about God. Fortunately, not in French, not in Italian, not even in Latin, but those who pronounce the message, the gospel, use the word God in the local language. And that rooted immediately as the gospel into the tradition of the people, into the religiosity of the people, into the cultural worldview of the people, because God was centered in their traditions. Is Professor Bosman here? Oh, <laughs> okay. I think I saw you with a copy of my book, Concepts of God. Okay. In that book, I have a list of about 1,600 names and attributes of God in African communities. I got those names from about 600 African languages and uh, uh, communities or what used to be called tribes. That our people could know so much about God. And this is why I say that was the most important point of reference when the gospel was preached because it was named 
through the traditional word of God. The traditional word that described God. The second point of reference which makes it so um, important is the name of Jesus. Now, Jesus is not named in African traditional religion. No. This was a new element into the religiosity of African peoples. And they embraced that name because it was the son of the God whom they knew. He had not been named. And that then sparked off the embracing of the gospel. I have collected more than 300 Christological titles in African Christianity. Now, there was a talk about uh, presenting European Christ and so on and so on. There, in these titles, to see how people are pictured and are picturing and are using those names to talk about Jesus Christ. Well, I will be going on this afternoon with my paper where um, we can see some few details about this whole process, what is happening, the Bible in the African setting. That is then the practical side of living the message of the gospel through the Bible. That's why I think it is so, so important that the people should understand the Bible carefully or fully, not through other cultural um, wordings. Naturally, that, that is inevitable. We all see the Bible through our cultural background. But the cultural background of European languages somehow transmits the, the Bible, the, the, the content of the Bible, but through this foreign to Africa, through this foreign uh, kind of foreign wind glass like that, you see there is a difference between looking at the, the outside through a completely open window, you see the trees, but also when the window is opaque, you can also see the tree, but, well, not completely opaque, but you will see it through the window, which is there. Now, this is how I have seen the value of Western languages being used to translate the Bible into African languages. Yes, something naturally goes through, but not 100% from what the original biblical um, well, content was through Aramaic and Hebrew and Greek. Naturally, we, we don't know quite 100% what that was, but we scholars have done a lot of work to really get to, towards the original um, the original manuscripts of the New Testament anyway, and quite a lot of the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible. Well, I don't want to, to speak too long, 
And uh, although I have not been given any paper <laughs> to show the time, anyway, I don't use it. I don't care. <laughs> So I just go by the spirit. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it informative and uh, certainly uh, John and Beatty uh, has done absolutely remarkable and such important work uh, in theology and Bible translation and helped us uh, to think uh, critically about uh, the role of uh, African scholarship and African theological scholarship uh, in particular. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please share it, uh, put it on your Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, stick it on your website, uh, use it uh, uh, wherever you would like. And uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel uh, and you'll be notified of videos uh, as soon as they're made available. So thanks for watching and uh, we hope to see you back soon.